In today's video, we're doing some Battlefield 5 myth busting. We're going to be taking a look at some of the most requested myths that you have posted in the previous video, and also some fun things, like you see in the background, the 32 man snake. This was originally done by Doom 49 in Battlefield 4, and I've wanted to remake it in some way in Battlefield 5. We gave it a crack, it's not exactly difficult to do, but fun to see. Now moving on to the really important stuff. What happens if everybody runs at each other with lunge mines? As you can tell from the footage in the background, it's completely random. The lunge mine just explodes. However, it is fairly funny to watch everybody fly around. I had a thought though, what would happen if the bayonet was on one team and the lunge mine was on the other? Well, the outcome was quite surprising. The two gadgets are fairly similar in terms of the way you charge at each other, but the explosive is slightly different from the impaling stab that you get with the bayonet. It turned out that the bayonet would win if you were aiming at the opponent, however the lunge mine would win if you were clever enough to aim at the floor and detonate it and kill your opponent that way. When you use a bayonet you tend to jab it towards the enemy right before impact, meaning that it is actually more likely to win in a one-on-one. -on -one. When it came to 20 players per side running at each other though, the lunge mine team tended to come out on top purely because you would blast everyone else out of the way. As you can see from the background though, it's about 50-50. A pointless experiment and not really a myth, but we did it anyway. This event took place last weekend on Saturday evening. It was with Azura and a bunch of other people on his Discord. We will be doing another one, I'm pretty certain, in the future. So if you want to take part, make sure that you either join his Discord or keep an eye out for any announcements. Also, check out Azura's channel. Some great stuff on there. Not only myth busting, but other things, mainly with tanks. But it's really, really useful if you're looking to get better on Battlefield. Now, I do have a couple more tests with the lunge mine. When this thing came out, I was wondering how many people would it kill? In the background, we've got a bit of footage that I managed to get on Operation Underground where I picked up quite a few lunge mine kills, starting out with that triple. Now, here, though, is what it is exceptional at. When you know there are players around a corner, you gain the speed boost with this very long sprint time. And once again, you will see three enemy players blasted out of the way. And it got me thinking... How many people could you take out with a lunge mine? Here you see a pile of enemy players all sitting together and one lunge mine boy stabbing them all and picking up a handful of kills. Here's the first person view of that. That is a fair amount of kills, the splash damage being very, very effective. What happens if you get the enemies to make this kind of horseshoe shape? so you're hitting more of them. Well, it turns out it's incredibly effective as well, once again racking up a massive stack of kills. It's pretty satisfying to watch as well if you stick the lunge mine in the middle of a pile of players, although it's not as effective. The lunge mine doesn't really have a radius around it or around the soldier, it's more at the very point of the lunge mine where it's at its most effective. We tried this as well, throwing people off a roof onto a load of people with lunge mines. Yeah, it's not really a very good experiment. It just turned out that everyone got blasted everywhere and died. A nice first person look as well from the base of the tower. The lunge mine will also do damage through buildings through solid walls, which is quite interesting. I'm not sure if it'll work on everything, but certainly on those little tin walls. Will it kill a plane? Well, sometimes it will. The first time I got run over, the second time when the plane's not moving, of course, it causes massive damage, as you know, to tanks as well. Very, very effective. So on to a different myth. How many boats can you stack? The Higgins boats I'm talking about here. As you guys probably know, on the US side, you get these carriers which will drop Higgins boats into the water. If you sit underneath one and then it is released, 
you can of course stack them on top of each other quite effectively as well. I think if we were to line this up absolutely perfectly, we might be able to get at least three and then drive it all the way to the shore. As it was, we did manage to get three because as you can see, that's at the maximum stack you can potentially get before you just obviously don't have the room. But unfortunately, our stacking skills were not really up to the task and we couldn't really drive it anywhere. That's it though, I think you can get three on top of each other. If anyone's managed to get four, please let me know. Here's another myth. Can you shoot the AT mine whilst it's in somebody's hands? Unfortunately, no, you cannot. However, you can shoot it just as they frisbee it out of their hands, and that's why some people have managed to get these really cool looking kills. Somebody asked in the comments of the last video, how many people can you get in a Higgins boat? Here's an example in the background. To be honest, it's as many as you want until some circus clown decides to blast the boat away and only the people who are sitting in the actual seats will stay there. Everyone else gets blasted out. As you'll see in a second, it's quite funny and some people go very, very far. Once you're in the boat, you can walk around, you can do what you want. It's pretty good, I suppose, if you're trying to get a mass amount of players onto one portion of the map. It's not ideal though if somebody detonates it. There goes the Higgins boat. It seems to fly very, very far. Here's an example of what happened to one of the players. He went absolutely flying across the entire map and then died on impact to the water. When it comes to the little wooden boats, once again, you can get as many people on there as you want. It doesn't sink. And then a tactical lunge mine slash AT mine will destroy everybody and blast a couple of people into the stratosphere. It's also possible, apparently, to get the wooden boat inside the Higgins boat just by ramming it into the back. You can't get a tank into the Higgins boat. We did try this many times, but you can get jeeps, little wooden boats, and essentially anything that will fit. A plane can even land on it, and you can drive it across the ocean that way. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but this is a pretty cool little tactic. Get yourself a wooden boat inside the Higgins boat. Now on to the bazooka. The backblast on the bazooka is incredibly entertaining, and Azura was trying out how many people he could kill with the backblast, as you can see. It's quite a few. I think you can get up to seven people in a line. If they're all grouped up together, well, it just depends on how many people you've got bunched up. Quite a lot, though, if they're sitting on a car like this and you've got the right angle, he was getting five, six, seven people at a time. Interestingly as well, the bazooka backblast is something that you could do during a match. It's not something very difficult to do, so to be honest, you might not be as lucky to find a pile of people like this, but you can definitely do it in live gameplay. When it comes to getting a kill on a pilot, it's the same story as when you're trying to snipe a pilot. It doesn't work on the Pacific Plains. However, Azura did persevere, and on the German Plains... Yes, you can damage a pilot. How you would do this when they're in midair, I'm not sure. That would be one hell of a top play, but it is possible to take out a pilot with the bazooka backblast. How about shooting people through a wall with the backblast? Well, it's actually very, very effective. As we see here, we have a healthy selection of American soldiers inside this bunker. Let's go outside, pull out the bazooka, and then fire away. Well, a double kill, not bad. How about we try it again after they're damaged? There you go, five people. So it is fairly effective. Maybe you could utilize that on a choke point. However, this is what really surprised me. When you have a concrete wall like this, it still fires through and kills people behind. That is really, really interesting. Azura's game was also lagging quite a bit because of the sheer amount of people. So I do apologize for that, but the bazooka does seem to be very effective. Finally, we just messed around a bit on the server and tried to launch some vehicles, and this was a question that I had. How high can you launch a vehicle? I've seen some people, and I've done it before, firing vehicles right across the map, but I'm wondering about pure height. If you were to put 32 players worth of explosives under a car and then launch it, how far away would the car go? Well, we did try it a couple of times. It's very difficult when you have a few people in the server who just can't control themselves and they keep on killing people and blowing stuff up. Hopefully in the next event we won't have those sort of people. But in this one, as you can see, the Jeep absolutely flew. It didn't go up though, it went forward. So we tried it on a ramp and unfortunately the same sort of thing happened. 
it is possible, I believe, to launch a car completely out of the map, right up to the skybox. I wonder where that is. But there is absolutely no reason why it couldn't go that high. The aggression that this thing was getting fired with is absolutely mental. So thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, leave a like down below. I do enjoy doing these events. If you have anything you want testing in the next event, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a list. Probably be a few more weeks time before you hear anything about the next event, but we'll definitely try and do one. Leave a like if you enjoyed, a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.